Hello, members, one and all of the Salvation Nation. We have some news that came unexpectedly on the 6th of September 2017 about uh, the Federal Reserve Vice President Stanley Fisher. Apparently, he will resign unexpectedly and early. Um, it appears that he will resign in mid-October, and that's important. And, and apparently, it will give Donald Trump a scope to start reshaping the leadership of the U.S. Central Bank sooner than expected, including the long-term outlook for monetary policy. And uh, what's fascinating about this is the timing of all this. Fisher was appointed by the Fed by President Obama in 2014 to a term as vice chair that would have expired in June 2018. And he's citing personal reasons. We're going to read this letter here that he sent uh, about this resignation. Here is a, a scanned version of that letter. September the 6th, 2017, to Donald Trump. Dear Mr. President, I'm running to inform you that for personal reasons, it is my intention to resign from the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System on or around October 13th, 2017. Now, notice it doesn't give an exact date on or around. Um, that might be interesting, too. It has been a great privilege to serve as the Federal Reserve Board, and most especially to work alongside Chair Yellen, as well as many other dedicated and talented men and women throughout the Federal Reserve System. During my time on the board, the economy has continued to strengthen, providing millions of additional jobs for working Americans. Informed by the lessons of the recent financial crisis, we have built upon earlier steps to make the financial system stronger and more resilient and better able to provide the credit so vital to the prosperity of our nation's households and businesses. <clears throat> So it's uh, very interesting. Uh, for Fed watchers, it expected he would step down, but not with eight months remaining in his term. His departure will remove an influential vote at a time when the central bank appears divided on the need to hike interest rates uh, again this year, despite lower than desired inflation. He's been a powerful advocate for maintaining post-crisis financial regulations that the Trump administration wants to roll back. Fisher was a voice of experience, having been a central banker, and his international standing was impeccable, J.P. Morgan Chase and Company's chief U.S. economist um, said. And that's further element of uncertainty to policy, who will be running policy early next year. Policymakers are expected to announce a timetable to start shrinking their $4.5 trillion balance sheet when they meet September 19th and 20 in Washington while uh, leaving rates on hold as they debate another hike before the year end, as officials projected in June. So now there's four vacancies with the Fed. And uh, Trump has nominated Randall Quarles, a senior U.S. Treasury official under President George Bush, to be governor and heads up the Fed's regulatory efforts. Quarles' nomination is still pending before the Senate. In addition, Janet Yellen's term as chair expires in February. Trump has said that a renomination of Yellen is under consideration, Though the White House is also looking at other candidates. Economists polled by Bloomberg expect him to pick someone else. And Gary Cohn, who's the National Economic Council Director, has got the highest rating. And then Janet Yellen's coming in second place. Um, and then Kevin Warsh, and then a slew of other people here that I've never heard of before, other than other federal people within the Federal Reserve. And um, so, very interesting indeed. This whole thing is quite interesting with the timing of all this because October 13th is the uh, last working day of the week. And um, some of you follow Jim Rickards, and um, he has stated that there's something going to happen on Sunday morning, October the 15th, some trigger event. Now, keep in mind that just like the Andrew McGuire, these predictions uh, typically. And Jim Rickards has been wrong before. Andrew McGuire has been wrong before. But this prediction here is not one that's going to be some some crazy cataclysmic event right then and there. It's a lot of a lot of this is behind the scenes with the IMF. And uh, I could almost see something like this happening. And maybe Stanley Fisher knows it's going to happen. 
in these other vacancies and everything, kind of see it around the corner. Maybe there's nothing they can do, and they they don't. He doesn't want it under his watch, is my guess, perhaps. And that is is how the U.S. will lose its stranglehold um, with the dollar being the world's reserve currency. And these charts here uh, from from this website talk about how the um, United States has a has veto power because they are in the majority. The only ones that hold that much since we have a majority over 15%, and uh, the dollar is the, the most powerful reserve currency. Now, the renminbi joined the breadbasket of currencies back in October of last year, but that event itself did not really mean a whole lot, but it may when because uh, China has been pushing, obviously, against us for quite a while as part of the BRICS nation, which is Brazil, Russia, India, China, in South Africa, and uh, they may band together to uh, make a new world uh, currency. Um, or so we shall see what will happen. It's very interesting to say that uh, you know they may be positioning themselves uh, based off the recent G20 summit, and uh, there's a written promise to to crank up the BRICS voting rights to match their relative positions with the world economy. If things work out the way that they say with this information, that means that uh, uh, the BRICS uh, breakdown will 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 be will turn more into their favor with the other member countries, and that means the dollar could lose power in that um, uh, system, and it will have the clout to maybe make the dollar less influential. And essentially, there will be some new world currency. Maybe it'll be a, a yuan-based uh, system. Who knows? But essentially, the petrodollar could eventually die. There, uh, this is what the prediction is. And of course, he's saying it's a fact, or whatever have you. Take it for a grain of salt. I don't really know how to take this as far as uh, what's what's involved here. But they say it's going to be a a, a slow. Um, transition or what have you. It's talking about here how they um, set up lines of currency swaps which allow them to trade without using the U.S. dollar. And we know there's been some pushback against the U.S. dollar from these nations. They say after October the 15th, these nations will not have to operate in such secrecy anymore. And they'll have the votes in the new IMF world money to make it happen in front of everyone's eyes. And that they'll abandon the dollar and put in the place of new world money. And uh, so I don't know if that will exactly happen even that quickly or, or what have you. But obviously, <clears throat> if the dollar is pushed out in time, then, uh, you know, we'll have less influence, obviously. And that could cause, um, you know, a lot of different problems down the road. Uh, even in this quick scenario, which he basically makes this giant leap in saying that it's going to happen and that, with the with this vote and everything after October fifteenth, that one day will trigger everything. Um, I just don't think it's going to be that quick. I do think there is a slow deg degradation in their mind of trying to get rid of the dollar, and uh, and this could be give us a hint or a, a, a peering into the window of what's happening with the IMF and um, and and everything. But I th still think that the dollar's strength, even beyond this, there's something about it that I don't know that that they would uh, let it happen quite that fast, even though it's it's being whittled away right now. And the fact that the Federal Reserve has been printing so much money, they've basically essentially shot themselves in the foot with it. Uh, there's still a lot of dollars overseas, by the way, by the, you know, that are being used. And a lot of that is, has come up from quantitative easing two and three. And uh, I think that's part of what's causing this backlash. Uh, but nonetheless, um, it is interesting timing. I don't know of anybody else that's making this comparison as to the timing of the uh, of Stanley Fisher. This was an unexpected announcement for him to leave on or around the 13th of October. Uh, so I don't know of anybody else that's making this connection, but I just thought it was quite interesting and unexpected for him to make that announcement now and for him to leave then at that particular time. And the fact that Jim Rickards is making his prediction for October the 15th. Uh, post your thoughts below what you think about this development. 
I'd like to extend the multitude of gratitude you all for watching and encourage you to please rate, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.